Hi, I'm Daryl Plummer and welcome to Top of Mind. Many industry leaders are starting to think that AI agents will change everything. And when they do, the world will be a different place. Some leaders have said the world of applications are about to end. SaaS may be at risk. Others feel that they will have so many AI agents running around their organizations that they will outnumber human beings by the millions. In that world, we have to start thinking, how do we protect ourselves and how do we build a protection that will work? Here comes the topic of guardian agents. A guardian agent is a gentic AI software that oversees what other AI does. The more general term, guardian AI. We need this idea because there are not enough people on the planet to actually watch all of the AI systems that will be doing things for us. So we must use AI as a means of watching AI. The interesting thing about it though, is that if we do this right, we can bring people back into the loop. Humans in the loop is what everyone's trust, but they're not enough of us. However, if we use guardian agents, we can reduce the number of things that a human has to look at to make sure the system is trustworthy. So guardian agents are a mechanism in order to do that. Within our research, we actually talk about many patterns of agent deployment. Multiple patterns include solo agents that go off and do things by themselves, multiple agents that work within an ecosystem of agents, you know, hang, hanging out together to perform a task, or guardian agents, guardrail agents, if we can call them that. They could be a judge and jury. Uh, they can be a protector to actually stop things, or they can just be overseers to tell us what's happening. In this world, guardian agents are becoming more necessary than ever before, and the companies that use them are going to see benefits that they might otherwise not be able to find. Guardian agents will evolve through multiple phases, just as agentic architectures evolve themselves. Agentic architectures are platform-based and uh, task-oriented. They're process-oriented. They do workflow. Agents that are really significant will have memory. They'll remember what happens, short-term memory in some cases, just to remember what was the number that you said five minutes ago, long-term memory, which would allow them to actually recount something that you did that you've completely forgotten. The idea of agents with memory uh, leads us to a world where the agents are collaborating with us. They're doing things for us and alongside of us. And as that evolution continues, we have to recognize that those agents are getting into areas where we need three specific types of support. First is quality control. Guardian agents can be used to actually look at the output from an agentic system and ask, is it quality output? Does it work for us? For example, in Italy, the company Translated is an AI language translation company. They use agent technologies to translate one language to another. And guardian agents are used to actually look at the output of the translations to say, are those translations accurate? Are they semantically correct? Are they within brand or are, are there in, inappropriate things in the translations? This is an output check, a quality step that a guardian agent can provide. And we see a lot of this kind of technology being used. We see a contractor submitting documents for building buildings that need to be reviewed. We see patent offices needing to review patents. And if the result is an AI output, a guardian agent can be used to check the quality. So that's one phase of its evolution and it will come in the much shorter term as we see more and more agents that we want to oversee being deployed. The second phase is when we get into the idea that it's not just checking their output, we need to watch what they're doing while they're in operation. So this is observability, monitoring, explainability, a well-known discipline within security arenas. Guardian agents can watch other agents just to see what they're doing, which APIs are they using, how much latency is in a process, is it generating outputs that are harmful in any particular way? Hallucinations and the like will be actually detected during use by guardian agent technology. So we have to be able to observe them to understand what they're doing. You know, when you think about how many agents there will be, we're not talking about dozens of agents out there performing task force. We're talking about millions of agents being deployed over the next few years. And if we're looking at millions of agents, and we've, we've said it before, there are not enough humans to keep up. So guardian agents as observers are a front line of defense where we can say, we can see what's happening. We can tell whether it's good or bad, or if it's not. I always use the example of a movie that was made back in the 1980s. I think it was Superman 3, uh, you know, in, in 
where a character played by Richard Pryor was a programmer who worked for a bank. And in that bank, he had changed the algorithms of funds transfers to deposit all the pennies into his account. And he became rich because of it. This notion of being able to co-opt an agent that's doing a funds transfer is a scary one. In that world, who notices? Who's going to see it first? How fast will they see it? A guardian agent will likely see it before a human being would and can alert human beings to the fact that it's happening. So humans are not taken out of the loop. They're made stronger in the loop. In our third phase of evolution, guardians will move into a world of protection where a guardian agent can be sent out to hunt down and shut down rogue agents, ones that are doing things that they shouldn't do. Because it's not enough just to alert a human that something bad is happening. We actually need to act on stopping it from happening before it becomes a problem. So this third phase of evolution of protecting systems and protecting people from AI is something that we'll all benefit from uh, as we evolve. Now, most agents today are fairly simplistic. They're fit fairly single stage, solo agents doing things. Uh, and so protecting from them isn't as urgent a dire need as it will be. But as we use more multi-agent systems, crossing multiple domains of business, accessing data where they need rights from different groups, we find that we're gonna need more and more agents that protect us, that shut things down. So we will look to security providers to do that kind of work primarily. We already have guardrails for AI systems. When those guardrails become agentic, they become guardian agents. So we are looking for a world of evolution that's going to take us from one place to another. Don't be afraid to experiment with agents to check the output of your other AI solutions. Don't be afraid of using AI agents to observe what's happening in the system and plan for a world where agents are actually your first line of defense in protection from AI missteps. One of the things that customers ask us about quite frequently is, what do I do about building guardian agents? Where do I go with all of this? Well, I would advise the first thing is to educate yourself, to understand more and more about agentic architecture. The research note, emerging patterns for building LLM-based AI agents is a great place to start. It gives you all of the different patterns for how agents are going to be deployed. It talks about guardian AI in that as one of the patterns. It talks about AI as judge, an agent that is judge and jury on certain things. We'll see more and more of this, and that is where the agent is overseeing the quality of what you do. So start with that note. Start with understanding what agents are and how they should be deployed. The next step is that you have to actually start experimenting with some of the agentic platforms that are emerging on the market. Most of the major players with AI have some sort of an agentic platform that they are, they are delivering. The good things about these platforms is that they can bring in a lot of the pieces that you need. They support multiple models, they support multiple modes of generative AI, and they can actually allow you to do things like tuning models, optimizing prompts, or building and launching your own agents. We have to experiment. We have to get out there and start figuring out how to build it. And a third thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you understand that agentic workflows, which are a part of what agents do, uh, are going to need you to go back to a world of process management process thinking about how the flow is management. How do you tie it to the data, access rights, the rules, the policies, and even the events that drive them forward? These are the places that guardian agents will be able to look to figure out when things are going wrong. Is there an event that wasn't handled? Was there an API that was called that shouldn't have been? Was there a log file that was written that violates certain rules or shows a rules violation in that file? These are the places where we will find the entry points for these guardians, and we have to remember that an agentic system isn't just a tool. It is an active, autonomous environment that's trying to reach a goal, and your goals have to be met in your ways. So learn as much as you can, evolve through the platforms, and start understanding how orchestration of agents and the flow of all of this hangs together in the end. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Daryl Plummer, and join us next time for Top of Mind.